All right, everyone. If you've ever watched my videos, you probably noticed that whenever I need to visit a website, I'm always using either Firefox or Camino. And if you look at my dock down here, you'll notice that I don't even have Safari installed in my dock. I still have it on my hard drive, of course, in my applications folder, but generally speaking, I rarely ever use Safari, and I may only open it or use it once a week, if that. So today I'm just going to give a couple of the reasons why I like to use Firefox over Safari and just look at some of the differences between the two web browsers. When it comes to rendering a web page accurately, both browsers do an equally good job. This is because the underlying rendering engine in both Firefox and Safari are written with open standards in mind. And fortunately, most webmasters are keen to the fact that Internet Explorer is losing market share and Firefox 3 is slowly but steadily catching up. Because of this, Safari comes in at a distant either third or fourth, depending on what metrics you look at. So there are still some sites that are specific more so towards Firefox than Safari. And because of that, just to make sure I don't have any type of issues, I generally will do all my surfing in Firefox. Some famous Mac users like Robert Kevin Rose and Chris Perillo both insist that Safari is one of the fastest web browsers available. While I will agree that Safari is a very competent, stable, and generally speaking fast web browser, I don't really perceive a performance difference between Firefox and Safari, which would compel me to use Safari as my general purpose web browser. In this example, I'll clear the cache of both of my web browsers, close the window, and just to be extra certain, I'll clear the cache again. And in Safari, I will reset Safari. And what I'll do from here is I'm just going to load a simple website, a website that I frequent most of the time, such as dig.com. So we see that dig renders very quickly and it just comes up on my screen. Going over to the Safari window, we'll do the same thing. And between the two, it just feels like the um, Safari experience goes a little bit slower. And I think the main reason why I feel that way about Safari is because whenever you're loading a web page, the progress of the page load shows up in the location bar. And whenever I'm using Safari, I am fixated on looking at the location bar to see the progress of the, the, uh, of the load of the web page. Firefox makes it a little more subtle. So when I go to various websites, it just pops right in. But the status bar or the loading progress occurs in the bottom. So it's a little more subtle. It's a little more hidden. And it doesn't draw your attention to the load times as dramatically as Safari. So in terms of user experience and user interface, I would say that Firefox has the advantage in that it keeps you focused on what's important and so your eyes aren't drawn towards the actual loading and rendering of the web page. When it comes to CPU usage, I find that Safari tends to be a pig. On occasion, I'll go to someone's Flickr uh, photo album and I'll just open up all of their photos or their photo sets in about 20 to 50 tabs. And most of the time, I'll have to end up doing this in Firefox because whenever I'm looking at large photos or downloading large photos from someone's uh, pro Flickr account, Safari will eat up all of my CPU cycles and the fans will kick in. Now, if you look at my current uh, activity monitor, for my screen recording software. Currently I'm pegged at about 40 or 40% 40 to record the, the screen recording. So what I'm gonna do now in Firefox 3 is I'm gonna click on the original photo size and have it load in the background. And you'll see that my CPU usage spikes up just a little bit and this is because I am loading the photo in the background in Firefox 3. But generally speaking, it didn't go above 55%, not that I saw. So if I switch back over to Safari version 3 now, clicking on the original photo size and loading that in the background, you'll notice that there's a much higher penalty for loading or downloading photos in Safari. 
And generally speaking, if I just want to load a bunch of photos in Flickr, view them at their original size, there is a price to be paid with the CPUs heating up and as a consequence my, my fans on my MacBook is just going to start spinning up. And for this reason, Safari is not very good for that. Now, between Firefox and Safari, if you're a photographer, you might be able to live with that because Safari does support color profiles and photos and color renderings are more accurate in Safari because it does support the right type of profiles. But for casual browsing like myself, or if I'm mostly doing technical website reading, I'm just using Safari, I mean Firefox, and that seems to do the job. It renders it, it does what it has to do, and there's no spike in CPU cycles. In my opinion, Apple has a lot of work to do in terms of features and usability when working with Safari. The inclusion of the Awesome Bar in Firefox 3 is perhaps the greatest usability improvement to web browsing, perhaps since tab browsing came along a couple of years ago. I find that the Awesome Bar really lives up to its name, and I find it very useful in particular when I'm looking at certain YouTube channels. If you were just to go to John for Lakers and just visit his channel, what you'll notice is that because he is a partner, he'll have a video play automatically. And most of the time I find that to be very annoying. So what I do instead is that for YouTube videos that I watch frequently, I just go uh, straight to the video page, do a bookmark, and include it in the awesome bar. So every time that I just want to watch someone's videos, but not really watch their intro or anything like that, if they're a partner, I can just go straight to their most recent videos and see what's available. In addition to that, the awesome bar allows me to complete uh, certain websites that don't end in a .org, .com, or .net suffix. So when I go to things such as twit.tv or pixelcore.tv, I've already bookmarked those websites and currently there is no way to uh, append a, a .tv in any of the web browsers. But Firefox 3 is able to work around that because you can just add a bookmark, put it in your awesome bar, and every time you just start typing in the first couple of letters, you'll go straight to that website. So Safari feels like a very stripped down and plain browser whenever I need to use Safari on anyone's system. When it comes to security, I feel safer using Firefox than I do using Safari. This is because Mozilla has a proven track record of being able to publish a patch almost as quickly as they find out about a serious security hole in their browser. Apple, on the other hand, tends to veil their products in OS X with a veil of secrecy. And when you're trying to fix a security vulnerability, this is not the right approach. When you publish a patch, you need to publish the technical details of what's been fixed. And this is to properly make sure that everything is fixed the way it's supposed to be, or else you leave your product open for further attack. So. Apple really needs to work on their security policy and the way that they address problems in the operating system in the web browser and in QuickTime because they are becoming a more publicly known company, they are gaining market share, and it would be very embarrassing to Steve Jobs and Apple as a whole should something really bad happen with OS X and everyone's computers gets hacked. So those are just some of the reasons why I think Firefox 3 is currently a better browser than Safari and it's free to try, open source. If you don't like it, just send it to the trash and um, you can get rid of it. Alright, that's about it. Peace.